Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk about the ground detection system that many Navy ships, including Iowa-class battleships, have. First off, just a little disclaimer, I am not an electrician. So, if you're interested in this subject, there are plenty of, of uh, good sources you can look up that probably have more information than I can give you today and uh, might even be more accurate. Iowa-class battleships generate 480 power. Uh, on board ships, we tend to call it 110, 220, or 440. Um, but land side, you tend to call it 120, 240, and 480. Uh, it's the same stuff. You can plug a motor in on that power on the ship or on land, and it's going to work the same. The big difference is ships are ungrounded systems. Most of the power you guys use land side is grounded. That means if there is stray current going through, it is grounded into the ground, uh, and it's not jumping between your different legs of power. 440 power is three phase. There's three legs, A, B, and C. If there is a break in one of those lines, or something else is going on, the power that's trying to get through that line is going to jump from the break to an unbroken line or in a grounded system to a ground. On a ship, we don't have any ground under us if things are working right. So that electrical charge goes directly into the ship's hull. That's not so much of a charge that if I then touch the hull, I'm going to get electrocuted, but it does start to deteriorate the steel, and that's not great for it. Uh, there, there are some other reasons why ships are ungrounded. Uh, I don't understand them well enough to go into them here, but from my point of view as the curator of a historic ship, if we've got an electric charge going into the ship's hull, that is bad for long-term preservation because it's deteriorating the steel and popping paint off. And so for me, it's very important to use the ship's original ground detectors to see if there is a ground. Each of the four engineering main spaces has a ground detector. Uh, so we're in engine room number two today, and our ground detector are these three light bulbs you can see behind me. Those are labeled A, B, and C for the three legs of power. When all three lights are lit, it means that none of my bulbs are bad. I've got a switch here, the ground detector lamp switch, Navy's very creative when it comes to naming things, that if I turn it on, if there is a ground, the lamp that doesn't have power going to it because its line is broken somewhere will go out. The other two lamps will go brighter because they've got more than their 440 voltage going through them. There are other ways to find this. You can use a multimeter to test fuses and things to see if you've got the right amount of power going into something, but uh, let's have an electrician do that. If things are working correctly here, when I turn the ground detector on, all three lamps will stay exactly as they are. Now, if I turn this on and there's a problem, one of it, it's showing a ground in one of the three legs of, of our power, then the next step would be I've got to go through uh, the ship's switchboard, which, which acts basically as our breaker box, and ripple off the power one circuit at a time, come up, test this, and then when it's not showing a ground anymore, that means I've narrowed it down to that circuit. Once I've narrowed it down to that circuit, I can then find all the things that are fed from that. Say so there's a circuit that feeds all the power in turret two. If that's the one in engine room two that has a ground in it, now I know that I can go in there and shut each individual piece down in that turret and track down where the ground is specifically. And it might take me back to an outlet where a wire is frayed and um, is contacting steel. So the power is jumping off of that wire through the steel to another wire. It might take me to um, a bus bar where there is some so much dust on it that has gotten damp that it is now completing a circuit between two of the legs on that bus bar. Uh, these are all things I've seen before. 
Um, it, it might take me to a place where, where a wire is broken entirely. On old ships like this, there's all sorts of issues that, uh, that you can find. So, without further ado, let's give this one a test. And again, this is just testing the circuits that are fed from engine room number two. You got to go to each of the engine rooms to test this. So when I turn this on, first off, I'm not going to look at the light bulbs because if I'm looking at it and something goes really wrong, it might cause a real bright uh, flash, which wouldn't be good for my eyes, or it might cause a bulb to break. These things are really old. Uh, so I'd rather not have that happen in my face. So let's turn this on. And all three lights stayed lit, which means there is no ground. So if I was to turn this on and one of the bulbs goes out, you notice when I did that, the other two bulbs got dimmer as I unthreaded it. There, there's no longer the full power going through the system. Um, if instead of those two bulbs getting dimmer when I unthreaded that, they both got brighter because they had more power than they were supposed to come to them, that's a sure sign that I've got a ground to go track down. So where's the breaker box in your house? Is it in the basement, in the garage? I guess on the battleship it counts as being in the basement since the engine room is more or less underwater. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. Also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us. It allows us to fix the electrical issues we find around the ship, which are very common. You can continue to support us via the link in the description below. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and what we're doing. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to spend an evening with me and other battleship enthusiasts and support the museum, Saturday, January 8th, we are hosting a meet and greet on board the ship. It starts at 4.30 and will probably run to about 9 p.m. Uh, during the talk, I'm going to answer questions from people like you. And also, we're going to uh, answer, talk about my opinions on a couple of my favorite questions. Um, one of them, what would a modernized Iowa-class battleship look like in 2022? And another one, what would have happened if Battleship New Jersey was in the San Bernardino Strait? Those are just a couple of the questions. We'll have some other ones. And again, you guys can submit questions. This uh, talk probably will not end up on the YouTube channel. Uh, and if it does, it'll be months before it happens. So if you're in the area and you want to su uh, support the museum, I'd love it if you came out and met me. The winter is traditionally a very slow time for the museum. So coming out and participating in events like this really helps us get through to the next busy season. There's a link in the description below with more information if you're interested in attending.